Hello everybody, in this video we're going to talk about functions with returns. Alright, let's get going. So let's say I'm coding up a candy shop. I have three items, one, two, three, with costs. I need to calculate the tax for each of them. That means a code that repeats. What do I use when I have code that repeats? That's right, a function. So I write my function for taxes. I call my function like a good Python student, and now I'm confused. Because I've printed all the taxes, but I have no good way to add them up. Our solution is we're going to take the functions we powered up with arguments and power them up one more time with something called returns. So if you remember function syntax, we have a def, the function name, parentheses, parameters inside the parentheses, and the colon. We have the indent, and after the indent, the function stuff, and now we're going to add the return. We're going to return something, and I'll show you how it's used right now. You might also remember when we call a function like input, we do variable equals to function and then the arguments. The way the return works is after I run the return code, it will substitute the function with whatever I returned. So visualized, it looks a little bit something like this. You already know functions like this. Input's one, len is another, any sort of casting is another. Whenever you're saving it to a variable, those are basically functions with returns. Print, on the other hand, you're not saving it to a variable. This is like a function without returns. Here it is in action. I have my tax program one more time. I'm calculating my tax, but instead of just printing it out, I want to give this number back to the program so I can use it for later. So I'll add the return in there, return the total tax, and I'll be sure to save this to a variable. Just like when I'm asking a question with the input, I do variable equals to input. Here I'm doing variables equal to the function, the function with the return. So I use this function with the return to give this tax back to the program to use later. And then in line 13, I can add them all together and then print them all out. I have a spacing error here, but uh, that's pretty minor. My total bill is $17 and about 71 cents. Students will always get confused about what's the difference between returns and no returns. So here is basically the breakdown. When you don't have a return, you're giving the result to a user. So usually you're printing to the screen and the computer is going to completely forget about the result. When you have a return, you're giving the result back to the computer and the computer can use that later. So here's an example. I have a function that prints out the square of a number. There is no return. So when I call a function, right after I call a function, the computer completely forgets about what it does, just like a goldfish forgets. And the result of the function prints the screen, but that's it. It's gone forever. I can rewrite this function using a return instead, so it calculates the square, then it returns the square. And if I want to, I can just print out the number right away, and you might think it's exactly the same as before. But look, I'm going to extend it. I'm going to call the function with 2, with 3, and 4. So basically, I'm testing my function three times. Each time I return, I'm returning the answer to the computer. The computer's saving those answers, and it can compare all three of those answers at the end to tell me if I have a good function. So again, in this example, with a return, the function gives the answer to the computer, the computer remembers, and the computer can do stuff with it. In the real world, most, but not all, of your functions will use returns. So just keep that in mind. All right, common mistakes. So the number one common mistake people make is not following the directions. If the directions say that there is a return, or that the function returns, then your function should have a return in it. It's a little silly, but every year we see this kind of thing in the labs. If you get an internship at Google or Amazon or something like that, they're going to say to you, make a function with this many parameters that returns this. And you're going to have to follow those directions exactly. So we're trying to prep you for when that day comes. A second mistake that people will make is not realizing that a return exits the function. So if I call the function here, it will go to the first line of the function. Here, setting number to be equal to 5. It'll check the if. The boolean inside the if is true, so it'll do the line inside the if which is return true. And after that, it's out of here, man. It's not going to do any of these other prints down here. That's how the returns work. Return exits the function. Here's another common mistake. I'll make a function. It'll print out none, and you'll wonder what's going on. So here's what's going on here step by step. On line 4, I'm calling the function with argument 2. So line 1 sets number equals to 2. Line 2 prints out number times number, which is 4. But then I get this none, it prints out none somehow, and I'm not sure what's going on. And the trick here is that all functions, if you don't return anything, automatically return a none. We call this an implicit return. So when I return the none, it gets substituted in 
or the function, and I'm printing none. And that's not what I want. Now, while that's kind of a complicated explanation, it's okay if you didn't understand that the first time. The main thing is, if you have a function that returns nothing, don't print it out. Don't save it to a variable. You're going to run the function by itself. Again, a function without a return, just run the function. Don't print the function. Don't save it to anything. Just run the function. Now I'm going to rewrite this function to use a return. So I'm going to set square equals number to times number. That's okay. I'm going to call the function just by itself as I did before. And what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. What's going on here? When I have a function with a return, I usually want to save that return to a variable. So it's like a len or an input. These are functions with returns. Otherwise, you're basically throwing the result of your function into the trash. So now I'll fix this. I'll make a variable called result. I'll set result equals to the function, and then I'll print result. And when I do that, I get what I expect. Remember, when I have a function with a return, I'm returning it to the computer, and I should save the return into something so the computer can do something with it. I'm just going to summarize my rules for beginners. If you have a function without a return, just call the function. If you have a function with a return, save that output to a variable and do something with the variable. When you know what you're doing, you might do something different. You might print out the output of a function with a return right away. You might use it right away. But what we found over many, many years is that for people who are beginners, following these rules saves you from a lot of mistakes that you can't really figure out. All right, here's the part where we go over the solutions to the lab. As you know, pause the video, try it out first, but here we are in case you get stuck. So for this first one, all we're asking you to do is make a function with a return. The function is going to concatenate hello in the name of the parameter. So we go def, greetings, parentheses, and then the parameter. So I'll call it anything I like. I'll call it name, and then the colon. And all I'm doing is sticking hello with the parameter together. So I'm going to make a variable return string equals to quotation hello plus the parameter, and then I'll return that new string. And that works, and we're good. This is just like we did in the returns in action part of this video. All right, for the next one, the next one I'm just asking you to call the function. I've already given the function to you. So this is a function with the return. So the safest way to do it is variable is equal to the function, just like we do with inputs, just like we do with len. So I'll do that right now. Number is equal to the function name cube, parentheses 5. I'll print that variable, print number, and when I do, it works and it's good. I could do this all in one try. I don't recommend that you do this. We've had a lot of students have strange errors that they can't really debug, but it does work. All right, so now we're in the debugging labs. So I'm going to run this first, and when I do, you'll see I get the correct answer 125, but I also get the strange none thing. If you look at the function, you'll see there's no return here. And if you remember the rules of thumb, if there's no return, just call the function. Don't save it to a variable. Don't print it out at the same time. Just call the function. And if you remember, the reason is because there's always a return. Even if you don't put one, it returns none. And that's where that none is coming from. So anyway, I'll run it. Now it prints out 125, and it doesn't print out that extra none. All right, the second debugging one. It's given me the function already. It's got a return. I'm going to run it, and you'll see that it looks like nothing happens. This is the same thing that happens if you run input and you don't save it to a variable. If you run len and you don't save it to a variable, when you have a return, you want to save it to a variable. So if I save it to a variable and print it, it works as I expect. So remember the rule of thumb, with the return, save it to a variable. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.